turn your ear to heaven and hear the noise inside the sound of angels are the sound of angels song and all this for a king we could join and sing all to Christ the King How constant, how divine This song of ours will rise Oh, how constant, how divine This love of ours will rise Will rise Oh, praise Him Yeah gaze to heaven and raise a joyous noise the sound of salvation come the sound of rescued ones and all this for a king angels join to sing all for Christ the King thought of who you are let you lie shine in the darkest parts let your love fill the world you 
can be the fire down in my soul that I can't contain, I can't control. Would you fill me up to overflow? Let your love, come on, let's sing. I belong to you forever. I belong to you. Yes, I belong to you forever. I belong to you. Let your words be like a burning flame Come and close and touch my heart again The whole earth trembles at the sound of your name Let your love fill the world Now all I want is more of you Your breath is life, your words are truth Your glory here is bursting through Let your love fill the world Yes, I belong to you, forever I belong to you. And I belong to you, forever I belong to you. Yes, I belong to you, forever I belong to you. And you have set my heart on fire, my love.
wouldn't be hopeless without your goodness. I wouldn't be desperate without your love. Slave to the darkness. If it was in flow of the cross, you have won me with your. Chase me down when, when I was lost. Where would I be if it was in for the cross? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was a prisoner. Now I'm not. Your blood, you, you bought my freedom. Oh, hallelujah for the cross. Hallelujah. All my shame was met with mercy. Now your mercy will be my song and all the glory. I saw this in my mind's eye tonight when I was getting ready. Just lift your hand if you have any uh, sickness or infliction on your body tonight. Anything not feeling right, lift your hands. All right, see Jesus on the cross. See Jesus on that cross for you right now. Your sickness is on his body. Come on, do you believe that? That it was defeated that day? See it on his body. See his body broken for you. Whatever's on your body tonight, it's illegal. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. By his stripes you're healed tonight. 
Because he died, you live tonight. You live tonight. See yourself healed. See yourself running like you never could before. Whatever wasn't working, work it out right now. You're healed tonight. By his stripes. By the stripes of Jesus. I'm speaking to every sickness and disease. Anybody home listening, rise up, Lazarus. You're here. By the strength of Jesus, you're here. Oh. Hallelujah. Just the voices. receive you Jesus oh. mm -hmm. my bones are here my bones are here to bring you something that's of worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear And looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus It's all about you, Jesus King of endless worth No one could express How much you deserve And 
I was weak and old. All I am is yours. Every single breath. I'm back. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it When it's all about you Yeah, it's all about you I'm coming back
turning back the cross before me the world the cross before Of weeks ago, Pastor Gary was talking, and, and he was he was saying that life is a series of choices, not chances. In other words, do what you know. And as a result of that, I, I went on this nice little journey and I preached a couple of messages um, because I, I, I took it a couple of steps further. Number one, don't forget your training. Do what you know, but don't forget your training. Don't forget what got you to where you are right now. Your faith walk. The storms may come, <laughs> but the faith walk continues, and so do we. Number two, um, play like a champion. And as I was going through this, it was like, well, what do you do when you don't want to know, uh, when, when you don't want to do what you know how to do? Have you ever been there? What do you do when you forget, you want to forget your training? And just leave it alone. What do you do when you don't feel like a champion? In other words, title of this message, what to do when your wood is wet. <laughs> Amen. So, what to do when your wood is wet. And it's usually from discouragement, disappointment, being tired or worn out. Uh-huh. So, I, I, I looked up wet wood. You can find anything online. So, when your wood is wet, it's a piece of wood that, okay, it says, a piece of wood that is wet is soggy, right? It can't be lit. It cannot get fired up. It will make others that come in contact with it wet and soggy. Come on now. It'll start to warp if it stays too wet. And it is of no use until it gets dried out. Come on, you can see our whole, you can map out our Christian walk when there's days where your wood is wet, it's soggy, you can't be lit, you can't get fired up, nobody can fire you up, then you get around other people and they get you all wet and soggy because they don't want to get fired up, right? And, and so, but the wood will dry out. There is a drying out process and you can get relit again. Amen. So in the Webster's Dictionary, it says something that is waterlogged is heavy and sluggish in movement. In other words, you're not getting any, you're not getting any movement out of them. They're not going to move. They're like stumps. Right? Dictionary.com, waterlogged. So filled or flooded with water as to be heavy or unmanageable. You're not going to teach me nothing. You're not going to tell me to do nothing. <laughs> you know people like that? Waterlogged with fatigue. If you get fatigued, it means to be weary with bodily or mental exertion. Exhaust the strength of. Then they're talking about things that are watery. So it says something that is watery, it's diluted, it's weak without force. <laughs> Soft, flabby. <laughs> And giving off a morbid discharge resembling water. It looks like water, but it's, no, a wet blanket. Uh, so <laughs> there's all these synonyms, right? 
wet blanket, a person or, or a thing that dampens, dampens or discourages activity, discourages your enthusiasm or your pleasure. Eeyore. Have you been around Eeyores? Do you know any Eeyores? Oh, what a beautiful day it is out there today. Yeah, but it's going to rain tomorrow. Wow. Wasn't that a good service? Yeah, but look how late it went. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. We got to get off of that now. Because what to do, that's when your wood is wet. Your wood is soaked. But there's a way out. Thank you, Jesus. There is a way out. Matthew 11, verse 28, King James. Jesus speaking. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. It doesn't say I might. He said, I will. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me from meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls for what? My yoke is easy and my burden is light. New Living, it says, come unto me, all you are, who are weary and carry, or carry heavy burdens. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you. I like that. Let me, let him teach you. Because he said, because I'm humble and gentle at heart. Galatians 6, chapter 9, it says, let us not get weary in well-doing or doing well. Right? Why? Because for in due season, we shall reap if we don't faint. Key word, don't faint, don't quit. Uh, New Living says, let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessings if we don't give up. Message, so let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued in doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give, if we don't give up or quit. Living Bible says this, let us not get tired of doing what's right. Don't get tired. I had an aunt, and every time I called her, how you doing, aunt? I'm tired. I'm and like every time she said tired, her, her, her shoulders would slump. I'm, I'm tired. I'm so tired. I'm <laughs> By the time you're done the conversation, you're laying on the floor. It's like, get up. <laughs> so let us not get tired of doing what is right. For after a while, we will reap a harvest, a blessing, if we don't get discouraged. Take the diss out of your courage. Right? Don't get discouraged and give up. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 30, please. New Living. This must drive some people wild, right? His horses. 1 Samuel 30, verse 1. Are you there? Okay, three days later, when David and his men arrived at home in at their town of Ziklag, they found that the Amalekites had made a raid into the Negev and Ziklag, and they crushed Ziklag and burned it to the ground. Mm -hmm. They carried off the women and the children and everyone else, but, uh, but without killing anyone. When David and his men saw the ruins and realized what had happened to their families, they wept until they could weep no more. Have you been there? So David's two wives, um, Ahinoam from Jezreel and Abigail, the widow from Nabal, from Carmel, were among those captured. Verse 6, David was now in great danger because all his men were very bitter about losing their sons and their daughters, and they began to talk of stoning him. But David found strength in the Lord his God, and in the, in the King James says that he encouraged himself in the Lord. He encouraged himself in the Lord. So what did he do? Well, I think one of the verses would be in cha uh, Psalms chapter 9. You know, you read through the Psalms, and it's all about encouragement because he gets discouraged, and he, and he just wants to give up and, you know, and, and going through all of these things that we've gone through, and some of his stuff is horrendous. But look how he ended up. He, he ended up okay. Psalms 91, or excuse me, Psalms 9, verse 1. Are you there? I will, it's a choice, praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all of your marvelous works. 
I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O you most high. When, verse three, when my enemies are, number one, turn back. Number two, they shall fall. And number three, they shall perish at your presence. But do you real, did you notice that they praised him first? The praise came first before verse three. Your breakthrough is going to come before verse 3. Because you have to praise him. Right? There, there's, a, there's a certain order of things. And you, you've got to will it. Because there's sometimes you just don't want to. When your wood is wet, you don't want to do nothing. Let's go to Psalms chapter 16, please. Verse 7, I will bless the Lord. I wonder how many times he says that. Because it, it's, it, it's, it's a current thread throughout all of these um, psalms. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My reigns also instruct me in the night seasons. There's a good prayer. Thank you, Lord, for instructing me in the night seasons. All right? I like to listen to the um, preaching on, on, uh, with my headphones at night when I'm sleeping. And I remember the first time I did that, I was listening to Mark Hankins. Woo! <laughs> it's three o'clock in the morning. It's like, oh, <sighs> I need somebody a little bit less calm. Yeah, because, oh, yeah, I was getting instructed in the night seasons. But I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Come on. Therefore, my heart is glad. My glory rejoices. My flesh so all, shall also rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in hell. What happened? He started to bless him, bless the Lord so much that, he, that now he's starting to make declarations. You will not leave my soul in hell. Neither will you suffer your Holy One to seek corruption. You will show me. Come on. All of a sudden, he's, he's getting a little bit boldacious. In his praise. And he's certain, no, you will, you will, you will, you will. You know what you're going to do for me? You're going to show me the path of life. Why? Because in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures evermore. Right? His praise got him bold where he can come boldly into the throne room. He wasn't feeling that before that. But he got there. What's he doing? Priming his pump, right? Psalms uh, eight, verse, chapter 18, verse 28. 27. Wow, that's good. Okay, it says, For you will save the afflicted people. You will bring down high looks. For you will light my candle. He wants to light you up. Mark Hankin says he's going to fire you up like a jet. The Lord will light, enlighten my, dark, my darkness, for by you I have run through a troop. By my God, I have leaped over a wall. By my God. Come on. Through him, you can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Leaping tall buildings at a single bound. Come on. Psalms 21, verse 1. Glory to God. Amen. I'm going to read this one out of the New Living uh, from 1 to 7, Ashton. Psalms 21. Verse 1. How the king rejoices in your strength, O Lord. He shouts with joy because you have given him victory. Mm-hmm. For you have given him, given him his heart's desire, and you have withheld nothing he requested. Well, 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 we can say that. Thank you, Lord, you've given us your hearts, our heart's desire today. And you, Lord, have withheld nothing that we request of you. No thing, nothing, not a zero. 
You welcomed him back. Okay, after he says that, it says interlude, right? Interlude. Think about it. Think about what? Well, think about you have, he's given you your heart's desire and he's withheld nothing you requested. Think about it. When you're into the, you know, when, you, when your wood is wet and you don't feel like thinking about nothing, think about this. Take your interlude. Huh. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so verse three. Sometimes you have to do that. Just take your interlude. Just take a break. Step back. Step off. Verse three, you welcomed him back with success and prosperity. What? Okay, I'm going to say it a little slower. You welcome him, us, back with success and prosperity. I think I'll have some of that. Thank you. How about you? I'll take some. You placed a crown of finest gold on his head. He asked you to preserve his life. You granted his request. The days of his life stretch on forever. Your victory brings him great honor. You've clothed him with splendor and majesty. You have endowed him with eternal blessings, given him the joy of your presence. Oh, my goodness. For the king trusts in the Lord. The unfailing love of the Most High will keep him from stumbling. His love will keep us from stumbling. Yeah, exactly. Thank God. Hallelujah, because we couldn't be doing it on our own. We'd be trip. Well, we're without him, we're tripping. Right? Really, stumble, trip. You'd be tripping. Tripping. Psalms 27, saying in the New Living, verse 1. Come on. When you start saying these verses when your wood is wet, even if you just start, I'll tell you, by the time you're done, you wouldn't be dry. Number 27, Psalms 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? Huh? That shouldn't even be a question mark. It should be a period. Why should I be afraid? Almost cocky. Right? Why should I, why should I be afraid? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with me? Why should we be afraid? Uh-uh. The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? <laughs> when evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and, my fo and the foes attack me, they will stumble. It doesn't say might. It says they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty ar army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the one thing I seek the most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Why? Because everything is covered. He's got your back. Delighting in the Lord's perfections, meditating in his temple, he, for he will conceal me when trouble comes. He will hide me in his sanctuary. We won't hide, but he'll hide us. Huh? Which means we don't have to cower. We're not cowards. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of the reach of a high uh, uh, plate. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary, I will offer uh, sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. The rather loud music, I may add. Thunder drums. You're welcome. So David really, <laughs> David knew how to encourage himself. Psalm 139, please. David knew how to do it. So if he can do it, he, sh he showed us how to do this thing, right? He showed us how to dry out our wood. What to do when your wood is wet. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. We're so praise him in the meantime. time. Praise him. <laughs> All right. Psalms 139, verse 14, King James. It says, oh, wait a minute, 13. I love this. For you have possessed my reins. He's talking to the Lord. Lord, you possessed me. Thank you. You possess my reins. You have covered me. 
uh, covered me in my mother's womb, I will praise you. Why? Because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. What marvelous are your works that my soul knows right well. No, well, he's talking to himself. He's looking in the mirror. Sometimes we have to have those mirror situations where we got to pull ourselves over to the mirror and say, listen up. You, who would is happen to be wet right now? Yeah. New Century Version says, I praise you because you made me in an amazing and wonderful way. What you have done is wonderful, and I know this very well. Can you imagine? Okay, are you going to say that about yourself to God? Do you have the guts to do that, sir? 36 feet of intestinal fortitude and a whole pile of guts, right? Would you say that? We do. We're word people. We know who we are. Amen? Message that says, I thank you, high God. You're breathtaking. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. Look at, look at what you did. She has some lip prints in the mirror. Just because he's that good. He says, I'm marvelously made. I worship in adoration. What a creation. Look at what you did. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Looking so fine. It's got to be mine. Complete Jewish Bible. It says, I thank you because I'm awesomely made. Wonderfully. Your works are wonders. And I know this very well. New Living. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know this. He knows something. What did he know? He knew how to encourage himself, right? Let's go to Acts chapter 16, please. Hope this is drying out any wood that you happen to have that, that possibly could be wet. I'm getting dried out. Hallelujah. Acts 16, uh, New Living Translation on this one, just because it's easier to read. Verse 22. Are you there? Okay. A mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas, and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten. It's one thing to be beaten, but severely? I'll pass. <laughs> yeah. No thanks. I'm good. Then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape, so the jailer put them into the inner dungeon, clamped their feet in the stocks, and around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Exactly. Singing hymns to God. Okay, they were praying first, singing hymns, and the other person, prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Why? Because of their praise, their prayers. Come on now, that's, a, that's our mission. Your mission, if you choose to accept it. Amen? Pray, praise, watch the shackles come off. Mm -hmm. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew out a sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, stop, don't kill yourself, we're all here. In Acts 16.23 in the, to 26 in the Message Bible, this was cool. After beating them black and blue, they threw them into jail, telling the jailkeeper to put them under a heavy guard so there'd be no chance of escape. And he did just that. They threw them into the maximum security cell in the jail, clamped leg irons on them. This is what, I, <laughs> this is cool. To verse 25, about, along about midnight, Paul and Silas were at prayer and singing a robust, a, a, robust, a robust hymn to God. Very robust. It was lively. <laughs> Running music. Well, what do you think robust is? Yeah. <laughs> it got some serious meat to it. Yeah, it's not Mary Margaret on the keyboard. <laughs> Won't we gather at the river? No. <laughs> no, when we run into the river. Jump in the jump, jump, jump in the river. You know the song. So along, around, <laughs> verse 25, along about midnight, Paul and Silas were at prayer and singing a robust, a robust 
him to God, and the other prisoners couldn't believe their ears. Come on, if you, could you imagine you're in prayer in prison and you're hearing all this stuff going on? Huh. That's pretty cool. Then without warning, a huge earthquake. The jailhouse tottered, jailhouse rock. Every door flew open and all the prisoners were loose. Every single one. From a song. Mm -hmm. Acts 26, verse 1, please. King James. Acts 26, verse 1. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, You are permitted to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before you, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the, of the Jews. Now, I did a little word search on the word happy there, and it means it's, it's a M-A-K-A-R-I-O-S, marikos, means supremely blessed. By extension, fortunate, well-off, happy, good, Happy with the implication of enjoying favorable circumstances and in congratulations. In other words, he said, I count myself happy and I'm about fitting to congratulate myself all day long. Mm hmm. So, that was free. Um, Job 5.22 Job 5.22. How do you get your wood to dry? Well, we're going to go there. King James. Do you have it? All right. Let her rip. At destruction and famine, you shall... Ha, 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 ha. At destruction and famine, you shall laugh. It doesn't say you might laugh. It doesn't say it would be good if you laughed, right? Or if you feel like it, laugh. It just says you shall. Um, Smith Wigglesworth said this, faith laughs in the face of impossibility. So I uh, went on line to look up things about laughter. And it says this, laughter is, I found this article, laughter is good for your health. Laughter relaxes the whole body. A good hearty laugh relieves physical tension. And stress, leaving your muscles relaxed for up to 45 minutes afterwards. If your wood is wet. Laughter boosts the immune system. Well, it's COVID. Laughter decreases stress hormones, increases immune cells, and infection-fighting antibodies, thus improving your resistance to disease. Uh-huh. You can laugh COVID right off your body. You can laugh the flu right off your body. Laughter triggers the release of endorphins, the body's feel-good chemicals, the body's natural feel-good chemicals. Endorphins pr promote an overall sense of well-being and can even temporarily relieve pain. Laughter protects the heart. Laughter improves the function of blood vessel, vessels, increases blood flow, which can help protect you against a heart attack or other cardiovascular problems. Yeah. You might be down a court. Right? Here's a good one. Laughter burns calories. Well, I don't want to go on a diet, so laugh. It says, it, so it's okay. It says, it's no replacement for going to the gym. But one study found that laughing for 10 to 15 minutes a day can burn about 40 calories. 40 calories. That's like a cookie, which, <laughs> which could be enough to lose three or four pounds over the course of a year. Right? But that's only for 10 or 15 minutes. What happens if you start doing that for an hour? Rat, rapid weight loss, right? <laughs> Will we? <laughs> Laughter lightens the anger's heavy load. Nothing diffuses anger and conflict faster than a shared laugh. But don't laugh at somebody if they're mad at you. <laughs> you get punched, though. <laughs> you get punched hard for that. Come on, we used to do that with our brothers, right? You get mad and, and you, you know, you sit up there, he's trying to tell you off and you're laughing at him. 
Mm-mm-mm. Time for you to go to sleep. <laughs> I'm, I'm fitting to knock you out. So, laughter lightens the anger's heavy load. Nothing diffuses anger and conflict faster than a shared laugh. Looking at the funny side can put problems into perspective, enable you to move on from confrontations without holding on to bitterness or resentment. That's a good one. Yeah, I think I'll hang on to that one. <laughs> <laughs> laughter may even help you live longer. What? Yeah. A study in Norway found that the people with a strong sense of humor, outlive those who don't laugh as much. The difference was particularly notable for those battling cancer. What? Yeah. Come on now. You can have a laughing session. I know they used to have laughter. They used to have laughing rooms in the States, right? You just go in there and start laughing. Yeah. 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 Romans 8, 28, we know this one. We know that all things work together for good to them who love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. Well, if all things are working to good, for the good, for your good, and your wood is wet, you know what to do. You need to praise him. You need to shout. You need to do whatever, whatever it takes, right? Whatever it takes. Um... The last three verses uh, are, yeah, sections. They're going to be out of the Passion Translation, Ashton. 1 Peter 1, 5 to 9 is the first one. It says, through our faith, the mighty power of God constantly guards us until our full salvation is ready to be re revealed in the last time. May the thoughts of this cause you to jump for joy. Woo! Even though you lately, <laughs> you've had to put up with grief of many trials. See? He was talking to somebody whose wood was very wet, soggy even. But these only reveal the sterling core of your faith, which is far more valuable than gold that perishes. For even gold, uh, for even gold is defined by fire. Your authentic faith. That's what we have here. Our faith is authentic. It's not some dry Mamby pamby, uh, hope we make it to the other side kind of faith. No, no, no. That's not us. It's authentic. It's real. And your authentic face, fa face, yeah, right on, will result in even more praise, glory, and honor when Jesus, the anointed one, is revealed. You love him passionately, although you haven't seen him, but through believing in him, you are saturated. You get saturated. And that's not going to wet your wood. That kind of saturation. With ecstatic joy, indescribably sublime, immersed in glory. Verse 9, for you are reaping the harvest of your faith, the full salvation promised to you, your soul's victory, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Jude one twenty four. One Jude 24, there is only one. <laughs> I know, but they put that down there, right? I don't know why they do that. Maybe their wood's wet. We don't know. <laughs> Verse 24. Now, this is in the Passion. Now to the one with enough power to prevent you from stumbling into sin and bring you faultless before his glorious presence to stand before him with ecstatic delight to the only God and Savior, through our Lord Jesus Christ, be endless glory and majesty, great power and authority, from before he created time, now and throughout all the ages of eternity. Amen. Last verse. You ready? Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30. Passion. Are you weary? Are you carrying a heavy burden? Come to me. I will refresh, refresh your life, for I am your oasis. Simply join your life with mine. Learn of my ways. You'll discover that I'm gentle, I'm humble, I'm easy to please. You'll find refreshment and rest in me, for all I require of you will be pleasant and easy to bear. Hallelujah. Serving him should be pleasant and easy to bear. Easy bear hallelujah 
He says, take my yoke. And I remember over at 110, the pastor was sharing this verse, and then I could see in my mind, I wasn't an open vision or nothing, but um, I could see that with that verse, it says, Jesus said, take my yoke upon him. And I could see his arm around my arm and walk him, and he just take, him, take me for a walk. And then all of a sudden, it was like, okay, I, I don't want you to walk over here. Uh, I want you to walk over here because over here the stage stops. So he's just going to take me and lead me and guide me as we go for a walk. And he just leads me past all of these different traps, and we're just walking, just enjoying one another. That's his yoke. It's easy, light and easy, pleasant. I like that. Pleasant and easy to bear and easy to hear. That's the God we serve. That's the God you serve. And you keep on hanging with him like that. Even if your wood does get wet, it'll dry really quick because there's a fire shut up in your bones <laughs> that you will not be able to contain it. That fire is there to quick dry any wet wood that you would actually have, happen to have. That's our God. So, Father, we just thank you for this night in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that we're encouraged today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You dried us out with a fresh blaze of your fire today. And we're, we declare that we're fired up, Lord, in you. We're fired up in you today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Huh. You energize us tonight, Lord. We just thank you for it in Jesus' name. The saints said, amen. We hope this message has encouraged you in your relationship with the Lord. For more information and ministry resources, we invite you to visit our website at www.newcovenantchurch.ca. We look forward to you joining us next time as we continue to live victoriously.